Hello everyone, a happy Friday. Finally. Um, today I want to give you an update in relation to um, how do you comply with the General Data Protection Regulation when you are a UK business now that we've gone over the uh, transition date which was on the 1st of January 2021 which therefore triggered the Brexit. So I in order for you to get yourself up to date about what the regime was, um, framework was in the UK in particular um, and also in France prior to the transition period, I refer you to my article which I'm going to uh, set out the URL, URL link of um, in the comments of this, uh, of this video. Uh, and podcast um, because it gives you everything you need to know about uh, what is the GDPR uh, and um, how to comply with it if you are a business in France, if you are a business in the UK and how to actually make sure that data flows easily between France and the UK. This is prior to the 1st of January 2021, prior to Brexit. Okay, so um, I assume in this video that you actually know the uh, basis about the GDPR, the EU GDPR. Now, with Brexit, a lot of things have changed for the UK businesses um, in the sense that everything is a bit in flux. And let me explain to you why. Well, when you are doing, so, so first and foremost, um, UK businesses now no longer have to comply with EU uh, uh, legislation, EU regulations and EU uh, directives and in particular with the EU GDPR because UK businesses are uh, within the UK and um, it is no longer a, um, an EU member state. Having said that though, prior to the, um, uh, the transition period, which was on the 1st of January 2021, obviously um, the UK um, implemented under UK law the provisions of the basics of the EU GDPR uh, in, into its um, 2018 Data Protection Act, yes? And through that, it means that at the moment, in this, but if we take a picture at this moment in time, um, we are the 5th of uh, February 2021 today, the current UK legislation relating to the principles set out in the EU GDPR uh, are still very close and, and almost similar to the provisions set out in the EU GDPR, the uh, EU regulation, which is called General Data Protection Regulation. So, that being said, um, when some UK businesses are receiving data, uh, data flows from the um, European Economic Area, so what is the European Economic Area? It is the 27 member states of the European Union, plus the states uh, which have um, uh, entered into less uh, constraining uh, 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 trade agreements uh, than the, um, uh, the EU agreements, such as Norway, um, Liechtenstein, etc., etc. So these other countries, they are also part of, uh, as well as Switzerland, they are also part of the European Economic Area. Okay, so it's the 27 member states of the European Union, plus all these countries which have done like a Norway deal. Um, so Liechtenstein, as I was saying, Norway, I think there are a few others, and also Switzerland. Okay, so this is the European Economic Area. Right, having said that, when um, UK businesses receive data flows from the European Economic Area, the EEA, then um, those data flows are compliant with UK, the UK GDPR and UK Data Protection Act because the UK does know that the, uh, uh, G the data protection uh, uh, framework which applies in the EEA is adequ adequate, is in adequacy with the requirements and standards um, set out in the UK in relation to data protection uh, of you know UK customers etc. 
Therefore, that means that UK businesses receiving data flows from the EEA is okay. That can actually uh, flow easily. However, uh, what is more complicated is when UK businesses do some data flows from the UK to um, countries which are or, 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 or partners which are in the EEA. What happens then? Well, um, if you go onto the um, UK's Data Protection Authority site, which is called the Information Commissioner Office, the ICO, Information Commissioner Office, you can actually um, watch a very useful webinar on what's happening at the moment in terms of complying with the GDPR regulation if you're in a UK business. And in the, in the, on that webinar, the um, uh, ladies, uh, uh, the speakers explain that at the moment, apparently the European Commission is going through a process of reviewing the adequacy of the UK GDPR and the UK da Data Protection Act, so the UK legal framework relating to the protection of, uh, of data, um, and checking that whether you know the, 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 there is an adequacy of this UK framework with the, uh, the EU GDPR. So this is ongoing. Okay. So at the moment, I would say that if, as a UK business, you need to actually do some data flows of uh, uh, customer data, in particular from the UK to the European the EEA, you need to check first by calling your um, the Information Commissioner Office, which is your Data Protection Authority in the UK, and double checking how you, you can do this. Okay, This is my best advice at the moment, because as I said, this is an influx process and the European Commission is going through this process of checking the adequacy right, um, by the EU of receiving all this, uh, this, this uh, data flow from the UK. Now, one thing you have to bear in mind if you are a UK business and you intend to still have some customers in the EU, which, you know, most of the time I think is the case because uh, you have a much bigger customer base if you can actually sell your goods or services to the um, 27 member states of the European Union, then that means that you have to comply not only with the UK GDPR and the UK Data Protection Act, but also with the EU GDPR still, even after the transition period. Why? Well, because if um, you are not uh, using the uh, customer data in particular of your EU customers in a way which is uh, uh, compliant with the EU GDPR, you will be fined uh, by the, um, uh, the appropriate uh, data protection authority the lead supervisory authority in that particular EU member state um, where the uh, offence has been, com has been, has been uh, occurring. So really my piece of advice on this is that you do need to actually uh, uh, have an audit done of your UK business to ensure that you're still in compliance with the EU GDPR should you decide to sell your wares, your goods and your services to, uh, to, to EU customers after the 1st of January 2021. So, well, but really, uh, in any case, you, you should be, you, your business should be up to scratch with that because that is what you were doing before uh, the 1st of January 2021, before the end of the transition period. So it shouldn't be an issue, but you need to actually update everything in relation to this in particular, in your terms and conditions, etc. So one question you, 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 that springs to mind is which lead supervisory authority, lead supervisory authority, which data protection authority will actually um, be supervising your activities uh, your, your, uh, relating to data management and data collection and data gathering um, in the UK and and uh, in the European uh, in the EEA. Well. Um, in any case, as a UK business, you will always be uh, regulated and, and um, uh, supervised by the uh, ICO, the Information Commissioner Office, uh, uh, which I've spoke about, and, um, and which is the Data Protection Authority in the United Kingdom. So that's that. Always you will have to report back to the ICO in relation to your head office and your work done out of your offices in the UK. So that's that. However, if you um, have an establishment in the uh, EEA, then um, you will have another 
Data Protection Authority, another lead supervisory authority to, uh, uh, to report to in the EEA, and that will be the Data Protection Authority of the place the, of your establishment in the EEA. So say, for example, you've got a, um, a branch or a subsidiary in France, even a branch, huh? Uh, or a subsidiary in France, then you will report to the French Data Protection Authority, which is called la Commission Nationale uh, Informatique et Liberté, CNIL, and you will have to also uh, be supervised by them and, um, and report to them as well. Okay? If you have more than two establishments in the European Economic uh, Area, in the EEA, then what happens? You will be regulated by still the ICO for the UK side of your business. You will be also regulated by the DPA, the Lead Supervisory Authority of the um, EEA establishment where you have the largest customer base. I understand from the, uh, this webinar from the UK ICO, okay? And what happens if you don't have any establishment in the EEA? So brace yourself for some crazy news. If that is the case, if you don't have any establishment in the EEA, potentially your UK business, which continues serving customers in the EEA, may uh, have to report to the, all the data protection authorities of the um, EEA state in which it does business and does some sales. I just can't believe it, but that is what the UK still was saying just now. So my advice, get an establishment in the EU, okay? Get an establishment so that you have, can have one DPO, DPA, sorry, Data Protection Authority, and then thanks to the process of the EU GDPR one-stop shop, which is that you only report to one uh, Data Protection Authority, one uh, lead supervisory authority in one EU state, as opposed to all the 27 EU members. So that's my advice right now. Yeah, and so um, not only that, but you also need to have an EU representative, okay, in that particular uh, in that particular country where you have your establishment. And as I said again, it's best to have an establishment in the EEA uh, at that rate. Um, how do you get an EU representative? Well, either you have like you know staff on the, on site at your uh, 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 e -E -E European. Um, branch or, 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 or subsidiary, or you can also sign a contract and enter into a services agreement with um, a, a, an entity which provides this type of uh, uh, representation, EU representation as a, as a, you know, a data protection officer in the EU um, for you. And actually our law firm, Crefervy, does provide such services of being the EU representative for UK businesses um, as they, they DPO for in that particular EEA uh, member state. So don't hesitate to reach out to us if you want to put that in place, which is really the moment. So yeah, there's a lot of work to do right now to update your uh, terms and conditions on your website, on your um, uh, you know, uh, contracts with your clients based in the EU and also in the UK in order to, and also a, a nodding really, uh, as to what you, uh, you, who you need to report to in the EU, uh, in the EEA, if you, if you keep on, you know, doing business there with your customers, which I think really is the best, because uh, of course the customer base in the, um, in the EEA is way larger than if you only do trade um, in, within the UK. Best of luck guys, we are here if you need us, and, um, Bye for now.